Sierra Leone is a land of hope, peace, love and unity. She has beautiful beaches, sweet culture and a history one can be proud of. After gaining independence, a lot has happened. Most people are proud of it, while some are not. A country is one that defines your identity and gives you the peace to breathe and live beautifully. That country which cultures are like a drip of honey in a baby's mouth is Sierra Leone. Mi Cupboard is a show that educates Sierra Leoneans and the world about the beautiful history and flourishing cultures of Sierra Leone. Join us on AYV TV channel 34 to get that exciting look at the country's beauty every Monday at 8.30 p.m. only on AYV TV with your host Hannah Yankson. 2021 and welcome to season two of me cover with a mm -hmm. lot of exciting culture and serial and easy to talk about now in 1872 there were numbers of early proposal for railway in the british colony of sierra leone however it was finally established in 1895 and started its services to the province in 1898. It served the country till 1975 until it was finally closed. This led to the opening of the Sierra Leone Railway Museum besides our client town. There are a lot of things to unfold on today's episode of Me Cupboard. Join me and the Yangtzee as we open the cupboard. Let's go and check it out. Sierra Leone is a land of hope, peace, love and unity. She has beautiful beaches, sweet culture and a history one can be proud of. After gaining independence, a lot has happened. Most people are proud of it, while some are not. A country is one that defines your identity and gives you the peace to breathe and live beautifully. That country which cultures are like a drip of honey in a baby's mouth is Sierra Leone. Mi Cupboard is a show that educates Sierra Leoneans and the world about the beautiful history and flourishing cultures of Sierra Leone. Join us on AYV TV channel 34 to get that exciting look at the country's beauty every Monday at 8.30 p.m. only on AYV TV with your host Hannah Yankson. Railway in Sierra Leone came into existence in 1895 and started its first passenger train service in 1898. It was an easy means of transportation that served the country till 1975. In 2005, shortly after the 10 years bloody civil war, the Sierra Leone government opened its National Railway Museum in Kleintown, Freetown, Sierra Leone. Due to a collection of bridges built, locomotives, carriages, wagons, and much more that have survived in the former railway workshops. Railway in Sierra Leone came into existence in 1895 and started its first passenger train service in 1898. It was an easy means of transportation that served the country till 1975. In 2005, Shortly after the 10 years beyond the Civil War, the Syrian government opened its National Railway Museum in Kleintown, Freetown, Sierra Leone. Due to a collection of bridges built locomotives, carriages, wagons and much more that have survived in the former railway workshops. So we are still here at the Sierra Leone National Railway Museum and I am with Mr. Mohamed Jabi who is going to give us a tour to know more about the Sierra Leone National Railway Museum. Okay, so can we start? Because I'm so excited. All right. You are most heartily welcome in the Sierra Leone National Railway Museum. I hope you could enjoy the visit in the Sierra Leone National Railway Museum. Yes, and we yes. are here to do to help us carry the message far and wide for the Railway Museum. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you're most heartily welcome. Uh, but before taking you around, I would like to show you the procedure that we have before gaining an entrance in the museum. As you could see, 
The salary of the United States and where are the adults is 5,000 euros. The primary children, as you seen this, the list, how to gain an entrance in the midst of the fees that people should pay, the non-national, as you could see, this is the amount that they pay. This is a reception deck. As you could see, my staff sitting down here, listening. So, and that, you could find us there, as you could see on the Facebook page, you see indeed there, right. And uh, this, we are the staff that wins the award at the end of the year. This, we are the lucky uh, rolling stocks which was kept here to serve as the major. But before that, we have Mohammed Momo Rubagua, who is the hero of the railway in, in the Sierra Leone, the colonial days. Mohammed Momo Rubagua was born on the 9th July 1934 from a Susu family. He attended the college secondary school on to standard three. In leaving his school at the time, the railway was operating in this country, and this was the depot for the operation of the railway client down here. Okay. Mohammed Mamaru Bangura find himself here to seek for a job employment, and he was lucky to be taken as an apprentice learning some skills during the operation of the railway. And then uh, uh, he was learning the welding sector. He became professional in the welding sectors. He studied in Germany, for three years training course under the welding sector. He was in Germany during a land that the railway of Sarah Lewis will close. And then they call upon him, he been back here to help phasing out of the railway in 1975. Just after the phasing out of the railway in 1975, 1977, Mohamed Momoru Bongoya retired. He was at home during he received a phone call from the general manager for him to come and help with the relics of the railway, the remains of the railway should be transformed into an arsenal workshop. And just after that exercise, the general manager left the job. Mohamed Momong Bangra became the general manager heading the national workshop. We are in been for a period of time, long period of time, until the rebel war stops him not to be in the national workshop here. And at the time, when these things were back in here and they transformed to a national workshop, it and every Sierra Leonean knows that this is a national workshop, this place we are, we are today, right? So, just after the, 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 the transforming of, of the, the relics of the railway into a national workshop, we have the war, right? When the war broke out, Mohammed Momoru Bangra was fighting to weld these windows to prevent some ragamuffins coming in here, uh, vandalizing some so he of... he did this himself? Yes, he did it himself, welding some of these windows to prevent ragamuffins coming in here and trip some of these rolling stocks naked. It was on that fighting to lost the battle right. Daring Cornet Stephen Davis came from the International Military Advisory Training Team. He took over. And Cornet Davis was an advisor to the late president, Al Haji Ahmed Tijan Kaba, at that time in 2004. Yes, he been down here on a visit. There he met with the Chinese people. Chinese people asked him, where are you from? Are you here to take the twins away? There in Kone Davis said, oh my God, where are they? <laughs> said. So uh, a Chinese guy accompanying Kone Davis from up there, coming down here, he saw that big Biagarat engine which is a, a powerful engine which was converted later on here with Mohammed Momogu Bangra. But when going along the tour, I will show you how. So, on me coming down here, I saw some of this carriage. And then, went straight to His Excellency, Allah Ahmed Jan Kaba, explaining to him how these things are very important and we are kept in here to serve as a museum. So he wants to take the responsibility of bringing this up as a museum. They are in Uloki, we met with Kone Davis to do the restoration of these rolling stocks as you will see them. Okay, so but when going along, this, uh, this is Mohammed Mamor Gongra, you hear of the image. Yes, okay. the image. We lost him in 2016 at oh, the old age of 83 years, yeah. as you could see him here. So, it's not to be forgotten as the hero, yes, as you could see him here. He even studied in, uh, in England for a month, visiting, and that will be able to upkeep this museum, as you could see. This is his photo here. We are in the one who ordered of Lokel. Okay. during the, the past government, as you could see here, okay? So, and that, this is the, the beginning of the museum. Okay. When the railway closed 1975, this year the lucky rolling stocks which was kept in here to serve as a museum. When we came in in 2004, 
before doing anything, we took some photos of how we met the stolen stock in here, oh. in a crackers from Ashi. This is how damaged How damaged the walls when they were kept in here. You know, during the war, this was a displaced camp. 10,000 this place was occupying in some of these buildings. Wow. And they were having access of coming in here, trip some of these things naked. So, so, yeah. So it was then paint and rebuilt again? Yes, yes. When going along the tour, you could see how we go about it when we've been here in 2004. The wonderful corner. The wonderful corner that David. sets up the team, Steve Davis, that we're going to say. As you could see, this is the restoration team in 2004. Just after the restoration in 2004, in 2005, the museum was officially opening to the public. It was an occasion attended with the President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, Al Hajime Tijankaba, and a director at the National Railway Museum in North Yorkshire, as you can see them here. Yes, okay. you see, this is the director at the North Yorkshire in London. Yes. This is the late President, Al Hajime Tijankaba, as you can see him here. And this is Steve, the founder of the museum. So, uh, here, this is how we met them, in a cracker's form, as you could see how they are, how dirty they are, as you've seen. And that, some of these coaches that you've seen here, you are built for certain people in the colonial days. Okay. Let's just have a look quickly at the general manager's coat, which was built 1915 for the use of the general managers in the colonial days during the operation of the railway, right? So, I had there, one big there who entered in here. That was a coach built for the governors in those days, since 1930. But when you've been there, we we'll gain an entrance. We will see. There is a lucky area we they used in those days when they were traveling. Uh, this is the team that uh, been in UK for a month visit, and that they will be able to upkeep this museum. This is the places we are in the visit in UK, as you could see some of the photos of the staff who've been in UK, and today. We we'll have our friends from different, different countries, friends of the museum, from which was led by the UK people, right, all over the world. They used to visit here, but just because of the problem that is going on within the world, some of them not to be here this year or the past years, but they used to come, have some training with us, training us, showing us how to take care of the museum. So this is the places we are in the visit. And then, have a look at this engine here, Kinley. Yes. This was an engine bought by the British people, take it back to UK. Oh. Yeah, it was working here in Sierra Leone. It's a steam locomotive engine. So, is it still with them? Back in UK, when the railway closed, 1975, most of the surrounding countries came in to bought some of our rolling stocks. And the British people, nevertheless, all of these rolling stocks are from their own country. <laughs> but when, when they they, they, they took it back. Yeah, because it belongs to us. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and it was running in the, uh, the North Yorkshire, in Landfair Lights Railway. We are in Sierra Leone, obviously, to learn more skills of how to take care of this museum, as you can see them here. Okay. okay? And that, this is the road, the road network of the railway. During the days when the trains were running in this country, yeah. we have the main line, which was from here, from Fritan here on to Pendembu, as you could see from Fritan here on to Pendembu here. That's the stopping point with the narrow gauge, which was just two feet six inches gauge. Along that main line, there was a branch line which connected here, Bawia. This is Bawia station those days, from Bawia on to Makini. That was the stop of the transport train that was running within the country in the colonial days, right? These are some of the rivers in Sierra Leone. And that red one there is the mining train, mining trains. But uh, the gauge was different. This one was just narrow, two feet six, while the mining train is three feet six because it has to carry heavy load, the iron ore mining. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is how the railway built. I should put this on here. Okay. Uh, have this a look. is how people yes. are using yeah. it. How, how beautiful Oh it my was. God. You could have a look here how the city looks like before. Right, as I told you just now, they were having the mountain railways, which was running from Water Street to Cotton Tree, Cotton Tree, on to Wilberforce, we are in the armies. Ah, right, as you could see the track here. If you have a look here, we see the track, how it runs, okay? So this is how the railway was built. 
Just after the survey in 1893, the following years they started the construction of the track. It was gradually step by step, from one place to another, from one place to another. From here, in Clientown here at the depot, on to Hastings, Hastings, Watlow, Watlow, on to Pendembu. With different different years, this is the tally how they we are departing the railway as you go see on to Pendembu, the 227 miles away. Okay. You see, so these are the higher authorities that are in operation on to the face now of railway 1975. This is Brigadier Andrew Jockin Smith, okay. who has been a president of this country for only one year. <laughs> <laughs> they never say the face now of the railway, right. Through by saying that training is not economical to the government era, and so they should close it and come up with another road network transportation. They, uh, they even got a loan from the World Bank of how to modernize the railway because there was uh, an argument going. Others were saying that they should modernize the railway from the stopping point from Pendembu on to Lavrian border, and that was the general manager Solomon A.J. Pratt. That was the intention for him to extend the railway but it did, it did not hold water and finally they faced out the railway 1975 ended up with second students who have been a president of this country for so many years they faced out the railway 1975 to 1975 so, so yeah yes uh, this is benjamin steve the first white engineer who came in Saralu to help us running the trains before. If you have a look here, we we'll see some of his photo here with his children here, as you can see there. But I'm so sorry, when they closed the railway in 1975, with the remains of the railway, today this depot has been divided into different, different categories. Now have the Chinese inside here, who have the government side, wherein you are now, and the Indians. And that it is very difficult to identify some of these buildings, like this building here, some of these buildings within here, they have been modernized, as you can see. We are in Benjamin. Steve, the engineer, was living. They also decide to run. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was living with his family. Okay. okay. Which is the governor's coach. Okay. Yes. This coach was built for the feast of the Queen. Followed mm. independence in 1961. Queen Elizabeth II. Yeah, Queen Elizabeth II. But she never <laughs> used the means. And no. today, you are the Queen of Saralu. <laughs> you can come in now. Uh, My crown. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You are here to bring in the trains back. Yes. In this country. <laughs> you, you could see the photo of the Queen during our visit in Saralu 1961. Okay. And this is our first Prime Minister, Sir Milton Magai. And the pictures, the pictures here, independent. And uh, we'll have another picture here, which tells us about the, the Queen. Now, in, how she yes, looks. Yes, in 2016. Imagine. I wonder uh, how I will look when I get old. Uh, yeah, you would be 100 years old. Uh, the Queen is 90 something, I think, now. Uh, yes, the, the husband, the, husband. the prince. You could see. Uh -huh. um, She's beautiful. Yeah. So can we go in? Yeah, and we can see? go in there. The green, white, and blue. Yes, the green, white, and blue flag. representing Sierra Leone, and there's the balcony. We are in the Queen should have stand. Okay. If she should have used this means, it's here that she should have stand and to, wait to people yeah. and seeing some important objects of the country. I don't know if my brother would be, able to be down there and take the photo waving to. Hello. 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 You're watching me <laughs> covered. <laughs> Bringing the trains back in this country. Okay. Um, uh, but uh, never mind, the coach was built for the rest of the Queen, but she did not use it. Okay. Yeah. She did not use it. So this is how we met it. Was it. Just carpet we have this was but this was the, 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 the carpet which the coach was having before. Yes, for the Queen. Okay. Yeah. So I'm the Queen now. <laughs> yeah, you are the Queen now. <laughs> wow. Right? Now if you have a look at some of the sump oil which was on it so since the day it was operating and on to the closing of the railway still, there. still good my wow. sister seen just just few part of this engine missing listen it's clear. so if possibilities should have arrived for us to start this engine and do some exhibition at the end of the month 
when school children pay visit or whatever people pay visit, put it on the track, go around this building like a Finally, mini I'm not train. Gonna wash my <laughs> so uh, let's have a look at the driver's cabin here. Yeah? Uh, will you be able to go up there? Yes. Well, you can go up and drive your yeah. own trains. So. Oh wow. Yeah. So this is the driver's cabin. See, these are uh. the gear positions. You drive the train. You apply the gear. You apply the brake. This is the starting point here. Here. Yes. Uh, when uh, this engine has a trip, the driver will be in here and have a look at some of these gauges if the engine is ready to move. And then we will start it here okay. and then keep on playing with, with this gear. As you can see, this is the vacuum brake. So they, they will stand, right? Or no, they no, just sit? the seat. Okay. Let, the seat. let me sit. Yeah, you will have a seat. This is the careful, it's not so good now. <laughs> when driving and the train, like, yes, it's a break. Yeah, yes, it's a break. If you want to stop the train, you apply it. Oh, then, yes. And uh, this is the toolbox. Look how heavy it is. I know. Heavy. And uh, we, we could even find the coal here. The coal they used before. Oh, hard coal. <laughs> See? Hard coal, like a stone. <laughs> I thought it was a stone. It's not a stone. No. This is a diesel. Okay. Be careful, please. Be careful. Uh, ah, yeah. the queen. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, this also another diesel engine, the same operation like that one. Okay. Right? And we have the powerful engine here, which was built in Manchester 1955. Wow. Uh, this was a steam engine before right but it was later converted to oil firing articulated it used burn oil at the end of the trains okay. that's why if you have a look down there you will see the tank when it yes, was converted it yes the tank from oil from coal to oil right there okay. yeah. and this is the driver's cabin and there's the firebox this is the firebox wherein they put the coal that they use as fuel from here to there and uh, this is the boiler wherein there are tubes in here that are responsible to suck the smoke from the firebox here See. and another tube in here that contains water when it was as, when it was operating as a steam because it is a heat steam that generates the engine to move and this is the water tank when it was converted from coal to oil okay. this is the water tank is an engine built in Manchester 1955 okay and the driver will simply have a look at some of these gauges, but I'm sure we missed them. Yeah. Many fittings are gone. If the engine is ready to move, and that it regulates it like this. Mm. By regulating it, heat will travel, goes down to the steam box. In the steam box, there are pistons in there which connected with the driving rod. By the force that the steam gives into the steam box, with mm. but I'm sorry, many fittings are gone. This is a break. This is the vacuum brake. This is the gear position, throttle, as you see. Okay? Yeah. So, so it's even two people can do it like this. Yeah, 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 yes. And also we miss the, 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 the seats here. Yeah. Ah, yes, we miss it's the seats. It's been a while. Yes, yes. And here I was a blower before. A blower like a horn. Okay? Yeah. All right. So we have the inspector's store, uh, inspector's uh, car here. Oh. Yes. Uh, this was for the inspectors to tour the rail. Okay. Having a look at the rail, it was a diesel engine before, driving both sides. As you could see, the foot pedal going this way and this way. Okay. I think it's the most uh, fastest means during the days of the railway. As you see, the foot pedal there, also down there, we we'll see. Um, this was it was for the for the mechanic. Here. So. Since the opening of the Sierra National Railway Museum, numbers of significant amounts of archival materials like documents, tickets, photographs, wagon label, and much more were found. The development of the Railway Museum archive will give meaning to the Rolling Stock collection and will help the nation to rediscover and understand a large part of its history. In the museum, Leo is a tour guide who gives educative information about the museum to tourists, 
school children, as well as Sierra Juniors who are interested in knowing more about the past as the Sierra Union Museum is a remarkable story of luck and pride to the country. To be honest, saying all this, I wish I was born by then and we still have it in Sierra Union. Trust me, this is beautiful and they still have record of all the things that happened in the past. And the train where I am standing now, this was built for the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth II, and it is still white and uh, beautiful. So this is how we come to an end of today's edition of Make Covered. I hope you enjoyed and learned a lot. Until next time, I am Honey Young, since so stay glued to AYB TV Channel 34. Bye bye. Mwah.